Hello YouTubers, this is the Nubifier with part 10 of Ship Fight. It's been a very long while and I'm bringing it back because it's been requested quite a bunch lately. Ship Fight is a series aimed to identify the pros and cons between two ships in a seemingly similar role and price range. The Ship Fight series is quite hard to create lately as the stats pages are a dumpster fire and can no longer be trusted. The good news is I have a workaround and that is that these ships are both flight ready. The deck in this category is quite well stacked. We have, but are not limited to, the Sen, the Dur, Corsair, Aquila, 600i, Carrick, from low to high. Inevitably, some of you are going to say, Nubifire, you missed the Endeavor. However, that ship is one of those ships that we haven't heard about in years. I'll address it when we get more information about it, so it's not on the list today. The Carrick is a great ship that is obviously a community favorite. One could easily argue that it's one of the best. It's the most expensive dedicated exploration ship on this list, but that's for a good reason. Many of us got it for $300 or $400. It's a lot of ship, just shy of capital class, but what it offers does come with a beefy overhead. Its weapons are turret based, which means to defend yourself, you're gonna need four players to man the guns. If it's fully manned, it's no pushover, with four double size four turrets positioned with crossed arcs offering practically no blind spots. It's tough, it has the range, it's modular, and it carries cargo. Lots of it at 456 SCU. Similar to the Caterpillar, the Carrick will offer modularity when that system's implemented. Currently, the included cargo containers are what we got, but as it's a military ship, the variations in the pods might be limited to a barracks, an extended workshop, and extended fuel cells. Its drones are designed to chart jump points. Its computer is designed to chart jump points. Its snub fighter is designed to chart jump points, its stabilizer arms are designed to chart jump points. There's a trend here. If CIG can make charting jump points profitable and ensuring that there are plenty of things for everyone to chart, the future is very bright for the Carrick. An included med bay, workshop, stellar cartography, crew rooms, kitchen, captain's quarters, upper and lower bridges, plus that snub bay and the rover bay. This was one of those ships that immediately invalidated older concepts like the Aquila when it was announced, especially at its original price of $350. That's quite the contender. The Origin 600i Exploration seems to be completely outgunned in every way here, but it's Origin, and they have a sneaky way of using tech to their advantage, both within lore and the included components. If Anvil is about function, Origin is all about form, efficiency, and function. The 600i is a work of art and filled with art. Windows and skylights everywhere to see the universe. It's physically smaller, with a cargo capacity one-tenth of the Carrick. This makes it unable to excel as a cargo runner, but that's not what this ship is for. The cargo on board is meant more for spares and whatever the passengers might like to bring along. The rover bay and science crew stations are nicely situated within the central module. There's an additional utility slot and a scanning bay in keeping with the exploration role. It has less power, it lacks a snub hanger, it has no dedicated medical bay, it has no dedicated workshop, but we were promised a refresh to bring this in line with a newer 890 jump. I'd love it if these were the things that would be considered as part of the update in keeping with the pledge price. There are obvious differences, but I want to highlight one that I noticed most when I was flying it. Pilot served weapons. The 600i has two player operated remote turrets, but the triple gimbaled main weapon array is left to the pilot, and with its agility, they're quite deadly with medium and some smaller targets. This does two things for me. It reduces the operational crew requirement to three, but it also brings a level of enjoyment to the pilot seat that I don't always get from the Carrick. Nothing wrong with being the captain of a ship, but why does the crew have to have all the fun? People are gonna say that the space in the back is a complete waste of time and serves no purpose. Yes, but as I posted in a previous video, there are VIP game mechanics that are planned for Star Citizen. The developers have said on several occasions that they plan to add missions that require a certain reputation and a certain ship in upkeep, quality, and status. So who won? Like you didn't know this was coming, the win has to go to the Carrick, but I think it's a lot closer margin for me than you might think. I find the 600 eyes the largest soloable ship in this category. You can certainly use a Carrick for sure as a central ship in a small org, but the 600 i seems to be a dream where the other one seems to be more of a boat. What we truly need is for CIG to add all the mechanics which define these ships in their intended purpose. I have and I love both for different reasons. If you came up with different conclusions than I did, please take the time to tell us why. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Please share if you got something out of the video. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.